In Lesson 6.3, you will learn how to add and subtract radical expressions. When adding and subtracting radical expressions, you can only add them or subtract them if you have matching radicands and matching indices. And then, if they are matching, then you add the coefficients. You never add the radicands. So, in this first example, we have square root 2 and square root 2. Matching indices, matching radicands. So what we'll do is add the coefficient of 3 plus this unwritten coefficient of 1. So that gives us 4 root 2. In the second example, we have cube root of 7 and cube root of 7. Those are matching. So we can do 2 minus 5, which gives us negative 3. And then the radical stays the same, cube root of 7. Um, next example here, our radicals are matching again. We have square root of 5xy in both cases. So we're going to add the coefficient of 8 with the unwritten coefficient of 1. So that gives us 9. The radicals remain unchanged. You don't do anything with the 5xy. Just leave it like it is. In our fourth example, again, we have matching radicands, matching indices. So we're going to take 6 minus 4 is 2. Radical remains unchanged. Okay, over here, word of caution. You cannot add radicals that don't have matching radicands. You never add the inside part of the radical. So we won't be doing that. Okay, simplifying radicals by adding and subtracting. In the first example, similar to what I just showed you, we have matching radicals, so we can subtract the coefficients. 3 minus 2 is 1, so this would give us 1 square root 5x, and there's no reason to write the 1 coefficient. Next example, we have square root of 7 and square root of 5. These are not matching radicands, so they cannot be combined. So B is simplified in the form that it's in already. Next example, we have 7xy in both cases. So you would think you can combine them, but the indices are not matching. We have a 3 and a 4. Since they don't match, again, this does not combine. So it's simplified in the form that it's in already. In example A, we have a cube root of 5 and a square root of 5. Again, they don't simplify. Example B, we have square root of xy, square root of xy. This is good. So now we can combine. And notice outside the radical, we have 3x and 4x. That's what we're combining. So 3x plus 4x would be 7x. Inside the radical remains unchanged. Example C, we have the fourth root of 3x cubed in both cases, so we can subtract our coefficients. 17 minus 15 would be 2. The radical remains unchanged. Okay, that's adding and subtracting radical expressions. So here's an application to it. If we have a stained glass window where the side of each of the small squares is 5 inches, we're talking about a side right here being 5 inches. We want to know how far it is around the outside of this window. So we're going to have to use some geometry to figure out if this is 5 and this is 5, then what is the distance across? So using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the two fives would be the A and the B. 25 plus 25 is 50. So C squared is 50. That means C is the square root of 50. Simplifying that radical, 50 is 25 times 2. 25 is a perfect square, which would be 5. So we get the um, diagonal piece here is 5 root 2. And all the diagonals around this window will be the same length, so we're going to um, take 5 root 2. 
and adding all the way around would be the same thing as multiplying. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 segments that are the same length. So 10 times 5 root 2 would be 50 root 2. Of course, our instructions say to give the answer to the nearest tenth. That means we're going to have to calculate it, and that comes out to 70.2 inches, rounding to the nearest tenth. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit more challenging, so you have to remember how to simplify from 6.2 and apply it here in 6.3. So we're going to add these radicals together. At the moment, they don't have matching radicands, but they can be simplified. 12 is 4 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2. So the square root of 12 is actually equal to 2 root 3. 75 can be factored as 3 times 25. 25 is a perfect square. The square root of 25 is 5, so we have 5 root 3. And then the square root of 3 here can't be simplified. Once we've simplified the square root 12 and the square root 75, we can see we now have matching radicals, so we can combine the coefficients. 2 plus 5 is 7, minus 1 is 6, so that would be 6 root 3. Okay, um, combining with cube roots, we'll do the same thing as we did on the previous example. We will start by factoring. So 250 would be 10 times 25. 10 is 2 times 5. 25 is 5 times 5. Since we're taking cube roots, we want groups of 3. So we have one group of 5 threes, so that's 5. And the 2 stays in the radical. Hopefully when we simplify these other two examples, or these other two parts of this problem, they will have a cube root of 2 inside the radical also. So let's find out. 54 is 6 times 9. 6 is 2 times 3. 9 is 3 times 3. We have a group of 3's here. So we have 3 cube root of 2. 16 is 4 times 4, and 4, of course, is 2 times 2. We have one group of 2's that comes out of the radical, and we have one 2 remaining in the radical, and now we can see that um, these are matching radicals and matching radicands, and so we can add the coefficients. 5 plus 3 is 8, minus 2 is 6. To be continued in part two.